So are you going to carry on being Spain's economy minister, I guess is the first question. Uh, well, it will depend on what the Prime Minister decides. President Sánchez needs to form his government. Of course, I'm committed to him and to his programme. And I will be willing to serve wherever I have the most value added. OK. Spain's economy, 2.2% growth predicted for this year. The ECB thinks that the European economy is going to bounce back in the second half of this year. Can I expect that 2.2 number to be a bit stronger? I think it's too early to be too optimistic. I, I, I'd rather be prudent. And that's why, for the moment, we're keeping our 2.2 forecast. I'd rather wait and see how things evolve before being too upbeat. 2.2 is already a very remarkable growth rate. Yeah? The Spanish economy is showing strong resilience in, the, in this environment, which is challenging. And for the moment, we'd rather be prudent. Minister, trade wars are again a prospect that countries have to deal with. How will the current trade wars and the prospect of more trade conflict on autos with Europe and the US impact the Spanish economy? Well, indeed, I mean, the, the, the rising of tensions uh, on the world trade arena is not a positive news for anyone. Uh, we've been supporting keeping the rules-based world trade order, order and uh, I think that that would be the best for everyone. Uh, trade has benefited Europe, has benefited Spain greatly in the last years, and I think we should all try to do our best uh, to calm down this kind of tensions. For the moment, we're seeing uh, that growth continues to be quite robust. The domestic uh, demand is picking up on the slowdown of economic uh, world trade. Uh, also, the German economy seems to be picking up, and the prospects, as Guy was just telling us, is positive for the second part of the year. So I hope that there will be no negative impact on, on growth in my country in the coming months. Now, you recently cut Spain's net debt issuance forecast. At the same time, Spanish bonds have been rallying for seven months. They're among the most favoured assets in Europe now. The yields are 88 basis points for the 10-year. Why would you cut and, and do you anticipate that that forecast will hold? Well, we, we, we want to cut our net debt issuance because we want to reduce our debt to GDP ratio as fast as possible. There's a very strong commitment on the side of our government to reduce deficit, to reduce debt, and uh, we need to cut net debt issuance if we want to go our debt uh, ratio to go down. Last year, we already cut, uh, as compared to the initial, the beginning of the year forecast, by 5 billion. This year, we have already announced that we're able to cut by 5 billion. This is positive news because it means that we are are quite serious on reducing the debt to GDP ratio, that we have a good revenue performance, that we're saving on our interest rate payments, very rightly so, as you pointed out, our, our premia are reaching all-time records in terms of lows. Uh, our interest rates are going down and I think that we should try to, to go down in terms of net issuance as fast as possible. We will see in the course of the year we can go even beyond these five billion cuts that we are announcing. Minister, you've spent a long time in Brussels. You know how Brussels works and you know how the kind of the process unfolds at, at times like these as we try and figure out the transition from one mm. commission to the next uh, and also from one ECB president to the next. I'm curious as to what the view in Spain is right now as to what kind of a leader is required in mm. Frankfurt at the ECB. The Spanish economy, as you say, kind of one of the standout strong points in Europe right now. But the ECB has played a critical part in all of this. It's kept interest rates low. Uh, it's uh, facilitated some of the growth that we've seen here in Europe. How much attention are you guys paying to who that that person is going to be who's going to mm. fulfill that role? Well, obviously, the head of the ECB is a very relevant position in the EU, as it is in, in the US or elsewhere. And uh, coming up is the, the whole discussion about the leading roles in the EU. The president of the commission, the council, the high representative for foreign affairs, the ECB president. Well, Spain will want to play a key role in this decision-making process because of the recent election result, which was positive and supported President Sanchez very strongly. Uh, let's see the European election coming up next Sunday. I hope that we will also have a good result, but also because of the very pro-European stance of the Spanish population. Uh, that, I think, is giving us a strong role in those decision-making processes that will take uh, place starting next week. The ECB is one of the key roles. We will want um, someone, a, a, a governor, a, a president of the, of the ECB that is able to ensure stability, price stability, euro stability, but also growth in Europe. 
There's also Brexit to deal with and, of course, banking union. How will you prioritise what you deal with in, you know, on a European level? And, and what concrete steps can we anticipate soon on banking union, Minister? Yes, Spain has been one of the countries advocating for the EU to uh, reinforce the economic and monetary union. We need the euro to be a source of stability going forward and we need to also fix the roof while the sun is shining. We don't need to uh, wait for another crisis to then realise that we need to reinforce the fiscal pillar, that we need to complete the banking union and that's why Spain has been contributing very constructively to these debates. Last December we reached uh, some important decisions with regards to banking union, uh, finalizing, finishing the, the creation of a backstop to the single resolution fund for bank resolution, uh, implementing precautionary programs to be developed in the European Stability Mechanism, the ESM. Agreements were reached in December. I hope that by June we will have them implemented uh, on paper, you know, with a review of the necessary laws and treaties. And that will be an important first step in the right direction. And I hope that we can also make progress on the reinforcement of the fiscal pillar, the creation of this budgetary instrument for convergence and competitiveness for the Eurozone.